Picture this, some sets of farmers decided to bring trucks carrying millions of bees into a desert with the aim of making a barren land fertile. What prompted this crazy idea? In Nevada, farmers faced a challenge. Their alfalfa crops weren't producing seeds because honeybees couldn't pollinate the flowers. To solve it, they turned to a native solution, millions of tiny alkali bees, carefully managed in specially prepared ground called bee beds. Thus essentially mimicking the desert soil these bees naturally thrive in to Nevada's barren desert soil. The ground was white with salt, cracked and lifeless. When compared to honeybees you typically pack into boxes, the alkali bees were gently placed in well-prepared bee beds that had a mixture of moistness and saltiness in such a way that each female could dig her own nest and begin pollinating the alfalfa flowers. People mocked it. Agricultural experts called it cruelty. Neighbors said the farmers had lost their minds. The idea of managing wild alkali bees in special desert soil sounded unusual even to experts and sparked curiosity among local farmers and agricultural researchers eager to see if it could really work. Everyone waited for the disaster they believed was coming. A month later, those same bees had turned into the lifeline of Nevada's struggling orchards. They pollinated the fields. They carried pollen between blossoms. They gave the farmers hope. The critics who had laughed started trying to copy the method. But why did a plan that looked insane work so well? In the year 2023, Nevada farmers faced a serious challenge, a collapse. Agriculture in the desert is never easy. But as each year passed by, crops failed, yields dropped. Old methods no longer worked. The heat and drought were enough problems, but the soil was the main villain. Lakes that could be found near the Nevada desert left mineral deposits that made the soil more alkaline with every passing season. The land grew saltier every year. Regular crops refused to grow. Farmers poured money into treatments and irrigation, but the soil rejected every fix. One crop refused to follow this trend. It was the alfalfa. Alfalfa thrived and grew really well in the salty soil. Farmers valued it because they could sell hay, but they earned more from seeds. Alfalfa seeds were in demand, and the plants themselves helped the land. Their deep roots reached water hidden far below, and once established, the plants held moisture in the soil. That protection mattered when drought hit. But alfalfa had a weakness. The plants produced seeds only when the flowers received a special kind of pollination. The petals worked in a very unique and complex manner. Something had to press down with the right force to trigger the seeds. Honeybees hated the flowers. Some couldn't trigger the petals while others refused to try. Fields bloomed purple, but farmers harvested almost no seeds, losing money every year. However, the solution to this problem was buried in the dusty covers of old scientific research. In the 1970s, scientists had studied a bee that had lived in Nevada for thousands of years. They called it the alkali bee. This insect lived nothing like honeybees. It did not build hives or make honey. Each female dug her own tunnel in salty ground and raised her young ones underground. While populations never disappeared entirely, farmers learned that creating and maintaining specialized bee beds was essential to ensure the bees thrived and continued to support their crops. The old research offered one clue. These bees could easily develop in soil that was salty, damp, and stable enough to hold tunnels. In other words, the very soil that Nevada farmers had been cursing might be the one thing alkali bees loved. Researchers revisited decades-old studies on alkali bees and found out that with carefully managed bee beds, these native pollinators could be more than just an alternative for honeybees. In fact, they could be the first and perfect option for the Nevada land and the alfalfa plant. They told farmers that alkali bees could solve their pollination problem. But they explained the challenge, too. These bees demanded very specific soil. The ground had to be salty, but moist. It had to stay loose enough for tunnels, but firm enough to hold their chambers. A few farmers, already on the edge of losing everything, decided they had nothing left to lose. They took the bold step, risking it all. They prepared some acres of their land for the experiment. They loosened the soil. They carefully prepared the soil, adjusting its natural salinity and moisture to create the ideal conditions for the alkali bees to dig their nests and thrive. Locals drove by, snapped photos, and posted them online. These men are ruining their own land, they said. These farmers have lost their minds. What plant will survive here, they scoffed. 
These Nevada farmers ignored them. They buried a network of pipes and sensors to control moisture. The system costs more than most irrigation setups, but it needs precision. To understand why anyone would try something this wild, you have to know just how desperate Nevada's farmers had become. Agriculture here was always a gamble. The desert climate pushed crops to their limits, and water was scarce. When trucks arrived with millions of alkali bees, workers released them onto the salted ground. Videos of the scene exploded online. People called them cruel for exploiting these insects. At first, the idea of managing wild alkali bees in specially prepared soil sounded weird, even to experts. Some farmers and researchers were in doubt, wondering if it would really work on a large scale. From a distance, it really didn't sound like a wise decision. Trucks unloading live bees into what looked like wasteland. The sun was beating down on white, salt-crusted ground. No flowers in sight, no green, no water. Just a strange new spectacle in a state that already had a reputation for failed farming experiments. Amidst the backlash and hate comments, these farmers refused to panic. They knew they needed at least a month before they could see results. Underground, something had already begun. The bees didn't die. They thrived. Each female landed on the salty crust, sensed the conditions below, and began digging. They broke through the salt, tunneled down into moist soil, and built perfect round chambers for their brood. The salt acted like armor, protecting the babies from disease and pests. The underground irrigation kept the tunnel stable. What looked like a wasteland above was turning into a beautiful miracle below. This experiment wasn't killing bees, it was giving them exactly what they needed to survive. Three weeks later, the first signs appeared. The alfalfa fields looked alive in ways no one had ever seen. The alkali bees worked tirelessly. They landed squarely on the flowers, triggered the tricky spring mechanism, and covered themselves in pollen. Each bee pollinated 200 to 300 flowers a day. Honeybees managed maybe 50 to 75. The alkali bees weren't just efficient. These bees didn't quit. They were out before sunrise, still flying when the sun dropped, and the heat didn't seem to bother them at all. Neighbors who had laughed before started showing up at fences, watching the fields in disbelief. Reporters from small Nevada papers came out to cover the bee experiment. What began as gossip turned into headlines. Farmers who once dismissed the idea started asking quiet questions. How do you build a bee bed? How much water does it need? Could it work on my land too? The shift was subtle at first, but it grew until the very people who had mocked the project wanted in. When the harvest came, the result surprised everyone. They couldn't believe it. Some sources even claimed that a five-acre bee bed had been able to pollinate more than 1,500 acres of alfalfa by the end of the season. And while that's way above expectations, well-managed bee beds can pollinate hundreds of acres. With the help of alkali bees, some fields saw a significant increase in seed production, sometimes nearly doubling the yields compared to fields without these specialized pollinators. That meant an extra fifteen dollars to $18,000 per acre. Word spread fast. Farmers from Utah, California, Arizona, and Colorado tried to copy the idea. Most failed. Without Nevada's unique mix of soil, moisture, and climate, their alkali bee populations struggled, and the results were often disappointing. It turned out Nevada's success wasn't just dumping bees onto dirt. It was a precise, science-backed system that worked only under specific conditions. Meanwhile, people who once mocked the Nevada farmers now lined up to learn from them. They paid thousands of dollars for guidance. Their farms transformed from a struggling operation into a regional training ground. Research teams soon swarmed the area to study the miracle. They discovered bee beds operating for decades without needing to be restocked. Well-managed bee beds can persist and support large populations of alkali bees for decades, though individual beds are typically much smaller, often just a few acres each, so populations didn't decline, they grew. Genetic studies confirmed that alkali bees had evolved perfectly for Nevada's desert environment. Even more surprisingly, environmental reports revealed that bee beds improved biodiversity. The controlled moisture created microorganisms that supported other plants and insects. Over the decades, Nevada's alfalfa seed industry has developed rapidly, with alkali bees playing a crucial role in increasing yields. Some folks claimed in theory that a farmer could even expand his farm from 200 acres to more than 1,500 and see profits soar past $4 million a year. 
Nevada's seeds gained a reputation for quality and sold at premium prices. Equipment companies even designed specialized tools for beebed construction. The state once mocked for dumping bees into the desert had become the global center of pollination innovation. Success didn't only come with greatness, it also came with challenges. It became survival of the fittest when farmers realized millions of dollars were at stake. Competition grew intense fights over water rights, land leases, and contracts for seed production. Rumors even spread of neighbors trying to borrow bees from each other's beds. Whether true or not, it showed just how valuable these tiny pollinators had become. Despite the tension, research kept pushing forward. Teams from universities ran controlled trials comparing alkali bees to honeybees. The results stunned even seasoned scientists. Records show that honeybees could only pollinate alfalfa flowers with a success rate of just 15 to 20 percent, while alkali bees achieved more than 90 percent. For every acre, the difference meant thousands of dollars in added yield. One researcher put it simply, this isn't a boost, it's a revolution. That revolution didn't stay confined to Nevada. Soon, farmers in Australia, South America, and even the Middle East called Nevada experts for guidance. The desert state became a global hub for pollination consulting. In recent times, Nevada's experience with alkali bees has been studied and shared by agricultural researchers around the world, guiding farmers looking to improve alfalfa pollination without relying solely on honeybees. But the rise of alkali bees wasn't just about money. It also changed how people thought about farming itself. For years, farmers could do nothing without honeybees. They spent a lot of money transporting bees across different states to pollinate their almonds, cherries, and melons. It wasn't even easy on the bees themselves. Colony collapse disorder made farmers worried year after year. Farmers would struggle to rent hives, paying more as shortages grew worse. Alkali bees offered an alternative. They didn't need hives, caretakers, or transportation. They stayed where they were, multiplied naturally, and worked tirelessly in the crops. They evolved to pollinate. They were nature's specialists, and Nevada farmers had cracked the code for raising them as well. The deeper scientists looked, the more surprises they found. Unlike honeybees, alkali bees didn't answer to a queen. Each female dug her own nest and ran it on her own. But they weren't antisocial. They often built nests in dense clusters, creating gigantic underground neighborhoods. In some Nevada fields, millions of tunnels stretched beneath the soil like a hidden city. Cameras inserted into the earth revealed chambers stocked with pollen balls and larvae perfectly engineered by insects no bigger than a fingernail. And unlike honeybees, alkali bees didn't sting unless severely threatened. Farmers' children played barefoot near the beds without fear. Alkali bees, unlike honeybees, can be characterized as non-aggressive and sting only if handled roughly. This affords the farmers the opportunity of working nearby without constant concern for stings. A greater challenge was discovered. Even though alkali bees developed and enjoyed Nevada's soil, other states' attempts to try failed hopelessly. Nevada had a rare blend of salt, moisture, and climate that couldn't be replicated with quick fixes. That exclusivity gave Nevada farmers a unique advantage. Soon, entire rural towns in Nevada transformed. Abandoned farms reopened. Young people returned to family land, seeing opportunity instead of decline. Businesses that once boarded up their windows reopened to serve booming communities. Equipment manufacturers built factories nearby to meet demand. The bee boom turned sleepy desert towns into thriving economies. Over time, universities and agricultural research teams began studying Nevada's alkali bee beds to understand how these native pollinators could improve alfalfa seed production and support sustainable farming practices. Extension agents received a flood of calls from farmers asking how to replicate the setup. Consultants and equipment makers moved in to offer training and tools, and local businesses started serving the steady stream of farmers and researchers who came to learn. Through all the noise and excitement, the farmers remained humble. It's about survival, they told reporters. We didn't do this to get rich. We did it because our farms were dying. The bees saved us, and we owe it to them to keep this balance right. That balance became crucial as Nevada faced new drought cycles. Critics worried that heavy reliance on irrigation systems for bee beds would strain water supplies. Some activists pushed back, saying shipping alfalfa seed overseas drained resources Nevada needed for itself. But farmers on the ground saw something different. Alfalfa's long roots reached deep, 
pulling up water that kept fields alive during dry spells. And those bee beds? They loosened the soil and kept the desert winds from carrying it away. What looked like a gamble started to change the land itself. Think about it. A farmer in the Nevada desert, laughed at by his neighbors, pouring salt on ground everyone else had given up on. Trucks arrive, carrying millions of bees into what was a hopeless soil that green could never grow in. The crowd laughs, experts shake their heads. But months later, the land hums with life. Blossoms burst open, seeds form, harvest doubles, then triples. And the farmer everyone mocked now leads a movement that saves an entire industry. This isn't just a story about science. It's about taking a gamble on an idea that sounded ridiculous and finding out it worked. It's about farmers paying attention to the land and realizing the answer was already there. Even now, alkali bees are still down in their tunnels, doing the same quiet work that once saved Nevada's crops. So when you hear about a farmer trying something that sounds impossible, remember the bees in the desert. People laughed at them. They doubted it would work. But out of salty ground grew harvests nobody thought could happen. And maybe that's the lesson. The ideas that sound the wildest sometimes end up changing everything. But Nevada's alkali bee story doesn't end with alfalfa. Scientists are now testing whether these native pollinators can boost other seed crops with similar tricky flowers. Early trials show promise, hinting that alkali bees could become part of specialized rotations, reducing the need to haul honeybee hives across states every year. Researchers are also fascinated by their behavior. Alkali bees nest in dense groups, but live independently, offering rare clues about how solitary insects evolve into social ones. Studying their genetics and disease resistance may even help protect honeybees from parasites and pesticides. And unlike imported honeybees, these natives improve the environment where they thrive. Their nesting beds enhance soil health, water retention, and plant diversity, a win for both farmers and conservationists. Perhaps the biggest surprise? Nevada's bee beds have become small attractions. School groups visit to learn about underground bee cities, and travelers stop to photograph buzzing purple fields. What began as a gamble has grown into one of America's unlikeliest success stories. So what do you think? Was Nevada lucky, or was it pure genius to bring back the alkali bees? Would you have taken that risk if it were your farm on the line? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting stories like this.